Hello and welcome to a new video about automation. This time we want to make an example. Huh? The next few videos we will do this example. Huh? We will do the example of a water power plant, hydro power plant. This I do because this is my field of profession, or this was my field of profession before I was uh, getting a teacher, before I became a teacher. Uh, this was my, my field of work, simply. Yeah? Water power plant, how does it look like? Yeah? Water power plant, you usually have some, some sort of reservoir. Yeah? So there is a dam or whatever, so you have some sort of reservoir. Yeah? It's filled with water, usually. Yeah? Then, you usually have some waterways, how you get down, yeah? then you have a valve, whatever, also here is a valve, yeah? then we have a valve, and then you have a turbine, okay, there's the turbine, and then you're at the lower level, simply. The different type, different type of turbines and so on. Hmm? That's it. Hmm? And you might not be only have one turbine. You might have several turbines, each with its own, and so on, and so on, and so on. Hmm? You might have several turbines. This is how a hydropower plant usually looks like. Yeah? Depends a little bit on the type of the hydropower plant, how far apart are those two levels, how many water is running through and so on. Yeah. I heard it's minor differences. From a control perspective of view it's minor differences. Yeah? From Engineering point of view, there are huge differences, huh? but from control perspective, there are minor differences. The first thing we are going to talk about is one specific unit in the hydropower plant. Huh? Hydropower plant, like I said, can, be, can consist of several units. Yeah? Now we are looking at one specific unit. We are looking at the unit automation. Yeah? So that's a lower level. We are going to look at the systems of the unit and see what automated systems might there be. First automated system are the waterways. So this, specifically this ball valve here, waterways. This might be automated, this valve, yeah, because depending on the type of the valve, is this a spherical valve or a flap or something like this, there might be even a hydro, hydraulic aggregate yeah, to, to, to operate this. There need to be followed some rules, then you need to be there need to be open a bypass, do some pressure equalizing here, then then open the main valve and so on. So there need to be some steps. So usually those things are automated. Huh? These are automated either by our own automation or in the unit automation. Waterways. Yeah. Then we have the turbine. This. Turbine. In the turbine we usually have uh, some regulating devices that we can choose the amount of water which is rushing through our turbine. Yeah? So there must be some wicket gate, there must be some nozzles or something which I can control to generate power. Yeah? There's also that's also a hydraulic system, so usually we have some hydraulic system here in the turbine. Yeah? Then we have cooling in the turbine because there are bearings, the bearings need to be cooled because there are friction, there is a bearing oil and so on. Yeah? And this needs to be cooled, so there's a cooling system. 
Cooling. Cooling, controlling. And, and hydraulics. These are the parts. Yeah. Cooling system, controlling system, which can maintain the speed of the unit or the power of the unit or whatever needed to be, yeah, depending on type of operation. Yeah. And then the hydraulics, which enables the controller to do this. Yeah. So this is basically controlling and hydraulics. There are two sides. This is the power part, this is the control part. Yeah. Turbine. Yeah. Then we do have zit, zit, generator, okay? electrical generator, or let's call it, yeah, let's call it generator. I will also write here valve. Generator. Generator is not only a thing which is turning and producing energy, it must be somehow regulated how much energy there are. Yeah? So there is an ex so called excitation system. Which can generate more or less voltage. Yeah? High excitation, low excitation needs to be selected the voltage level of the generator. It's simply by changing the magnetic field inside, by changing the excitation current, excitation system. And there is also a cooling system. It's also a cooling system. And then, here we have some lines, then we have a transformator, and then we have a power switch. So we have an electrical system. The electrical system, there's the transformator, which here usually there's mid voltage, so around five, six thousand volts. And here we have high voltage, can be up to 380, 380,000 volts and so on, or 400,000 volts, something like this. So in between there's the transformator, which is changing the voltage level, uh, then there's the electrical protection. What does this mean? If there is a wire break or something like this, if a wire is touching the ground, the earth, uh, the electrical protection need to switch off the generator. Uh, switch off, there need to be a power switch here, uh, circuit breaker. Circuit breaker is a real big switch which can switch off the maximum current running here. Circuit breaker. And there's also a disconnector. What is a circuit breaker? A circuit breaker can really switch off power. And a disconnector is just opening two lines without current. Okay? Disconnector is not designed to switch the power. Disconnector will disconnect the two lines, but will be gone afterwards. Circuit breaker can connect, disconnect two lines with full load. Okay. That's the difference. These are more massive and more expensive. These are rather fragile and, and not that expensive. Okay, and all those systems, yeah, they need to, to do a dance. Yeah? To, to operate. Yeah. One example, if we are starting, if we are starting the turbine, yeah, we need to, first, we need to turn on the cooling systems. Yeah. We need to turn on the cooling systems, then we need to, uh, then uh, we need to turn on the, the bearing, the bearing oil systems so that there is friction less, 
yeah, in the bearing, pump oil in the bearings. Yeah. Then we usually open the main valve yeah, with the procedure. After the main valve has opened, the controller gets its OK and says, OK, now go to nominal speed. The controller will call control the turbine to nominal speed. If we are close to nominal speed, the excitation system will get its command and say, OK, ex excite the generator. The generator will produce voltage because of the speed and the voltage. We have here a certain voltage with a certain frequency. The Synchronization device is looking at the voltage on the left side or on the turbine side and the voltage on the net side and tries to give commands to the turbine if the frequency is not correct yeah, to, to maintain the speed a little bit higher, a little bit lower, a little bit higher and so on, maintain the speed and to the excitation system to adopt to the voltage level and only if the speed or the frequency and the voltage level do fit together and we have the two sine waves yeah, in synchronization, we will turn on the circuit breaker. Okay, that's then the next step. Circuit breaker on, turbine controlling system gets the command to go to ground load, base load. Yeah. Then it will simply open the water flow here and go to some defined base load, yeah. depending on turbine type and so on. Okay. Then we're in operation. Okay. That was the transition from standstill to operation. So, in operation, we need then to can select between different control modes. We can use power control. Then we are, say to the controlling machine how many uh, megawatt we want to have, or we can switch to flow control. Then we switch how many cubic meters per second, and so on. There are different control modes. That's in normal operation. In standstill, we also have to follow a procedure to turn it off. Yeah. So the turbine needs to go to base load. Then the circuit breaker is open. Turbine needs to maintain the speed 100%. Yeah. Then the valve should be closed. Turbine is closed. Excitation system shut down. Everything in the right order. Yeah. To go from operation to standstill. Okay. And this is just the standard case. What happens if the electrical protection tells, ooh, we have to switch off immediately? What happens if the turbine controller says, ooh, the, or if the hydraulic system says pressure low, yeah, or something is happening? There are emergency shutdown chains and so on. So this is the task of the unit control system. Yeah? So to do this dance, to let all those systems of the unit work as a unit, yeah, we have the unit control. Yeah. That's the task of the unit control. Yeah. To maintain the unit within the wanted parameters. Yeah. Somebody at the unit control control panel yeah, says start the turbine. And then we begin. All the gizmos, all the automatic systems here, they are starting to do their job. Yeah. This here is field level or field control level. And then here we have then the unit control level. Okay. These are the two, two sides. Yeah. Field and unit control. The two lowest levels of our automation pyramid. If you remember. So this is what the unit control system is doing in a hydropower plant. Next time we are going to talk about a, the plant control system, okay. which is then doing its job with different units. What different things need to consider need to be considered there? We'll hear in the next video. For this time, I hope. It is clearer now what a unit control system does. Yeah? If you have another application, it will be pretty much the same. Small sub, automated sub things yeah? need to work together. Unit control. For this time, thank you very much for listening.
Goodbye.